And then we want to talk a little bit about upcoming events. We have our Elevate seminar with um, Women's Council Realtors, and that will be starting on Wednesday, February 3rd. Um, and remember, this is central time, so that we get on at 9. Uh, it's, uh, make sure everybody's registered. It's going to be a great event, great event. Yeah, the PMN portion of it starts on Wednesday, and then the actual conference Elevate is the 4th and the 5th. And um, sorry, uh, I put in Mountain Standard Time. Uh, it does start at 830 Mountain Standard Time on oh. Thursday and Friday. But um, she is correct that on Wednesday, it should have been 9 a.m. because that's Central Time. We're good. And also, I want to talk just a little bit about um, what we're doing on Thursday for our meeting. It's going to be Natalie Davis, and we'll invite everybody to join, just like we did this one, if you guys want. She's a great speaker. We've had her before. Um, so everybody, I think, will really enjoy her. That one's next month on February 18th. Yeah, February 18th. Yep. Can I confirm our records show that it's Tyrone Adams and Natalie Davis? Has that changed to just be Natalie Davis? Um, I haven't seen um, Tyrone yet, but um, that just means that we haven't been updated yet. We still are um, learning to coordinate with all four of our networks. So it is highly possible that you are correct. Thank you so much. All right, any questions about any of that ladies? And gentlemen, all right, let's, um, without any more to do, let's go to Sandra Lee. Sandra, welcome. I want to talk a little bit about you. She is passionate and has a mission to empower women everywhere to create lives that express their full potential, unique, magnif magnificent, and inner radiance to live their dreams by harnessing the incredible power of their thoughts. Thank you, Sandra. Take it away. Thank you so much. Is it possible for me to share my share the screen? Yes, I oh, yeah, I see down there. Okay, hang on a second. I'm not sure if I need to allow you. So I'm going to do that. And um, just so you know, if you're unfamiliar with zoom, you can make the um, the two sides of the screen bigger or smaller by moving the vertical line between them to one side or the other <clears throat> so that I'm not teeny tiny in the corner. <laughs> so, well, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to talk with you today. So I wanna share the simple, the three simple C's to activating your superpower. So you can achieve your goals and dreams, whatever they may be, far faster. Never in our lifetime has it been more important to activate your superpower than it is right now during these challenging and uncertain times. I wonder, do you even know that you have a superpower? Because you do. And it's right here at your fingertips. Now, by the end of my talk, you will know what your superpower is and the three keys to activating it. You'll have greater confidence in your ability to achieve your goals and dreams far faster, and you'll feel excited, inspired, and motivated to go for those goals and dreams. I want to start, though, by seeing if you can answer this riddle that describes your remarkable superpower. Who, hang on a second. Who am I? I am your constant companion. I am your greatest helper or heaviest burden. I will push you onward or drag you down to failure. I am completely at your command. Half the things you do, you might just as well turn over to me and I will be able to do them quickly and correctly. I'm easily managed, but you must be firm with me. Show me exactly what you want, and after a few lessons, I will do it automatically. I'm the servant of all great men and women, but alas, I have made failures of all those who are failures as well. Those who are great, I've made great. Those who are failures, I've made failures. I'm not a machine, though I work with all the precision of the finest machine you know and all the intelligence 
of the smartest person you've ever met. You may run me for profit or run me for ruin. It makes no difference to me. Take me, train me, be firm with me, and I'll place the world at your feet. Be easy with me, and I will destroy every dream you have. Who am I? So if you think you know who I am, chat, uh, type that into the chat box. Pull up the chat. Does anybody think they know? No? Carla, yeah, you've got it. I am your thinking. I am your thinking. Your thoughts are your superpower. And as the riddle said, you may run me for profit or run me for ruin. It makes no difference to me. Take me, train me, be firm with me, and I'll place the world at your feet. Be easy with me, and I'll destroy every dream you have. So if you learn just one thing from my presentation today, I want it to be that you are a powerfully creative being. And when you master this superpower, you will master your life. See, everything is created twice. First, it must be a thought before it can ever be a thing. Everything in the room that you're in, the clothes you're wearing, the internet we're using, the fact that you're part of this group on this call right now, all of that started as an idea or a thought in someone's mind. And since you can't not think, you're creating your life in every moment, especially with your predominant thought patterns and your emotionally charged thoughts. It's my passion and purpose to empower women everywhere, to create lives that they love living, that express their full potential and their unique magnificence by teaching them how to harness the superpower of their thoughts. Now, at the end of this talk, I'm gonna offer a gift to those of you who are interested in learning more about how to master your thinking so you can master your life and turn your dreams into your reality. But I wanna to start today by sharing a, a quick little story that will help us take the first step. Now, a mother mouse was leading her three little babies through a house when around a corner comes this big hungry cat. And as the cat is about to attack, the mother mouse makes herself as big as possible. She puts her babies behind her and in her loudest voice, she says, ruff, 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 ruff. Well, the cat is so startled by this that it runs off. And the mice family are saved. And the mother mouse turns to her little babies. And she says, that, my children, is the power of learning more than one language. Now, that's a fun little story. But the cat represents what was standing in the way of where the mouse wanted to go. And right now, there's something standing between you and what you want. So the language we're going to look at today is the language of success. Because there's a pattern or a way of doing things that creates our results. And when you understand that language, you can apply it to any area of your life that you want to improve and use it to create a dream of any magnitude. And one thing I've learned during the many opportunities I've had speaking to different groups is that often our dreams and goals are born out of the challenges we're facing or the pain we're currently experiencing. And I think it's pretty safe to say that 2020 was a very challenging year for many of us in so many ways. It challenged us to master our thinking so we didn't catch the virus of fear that is raging around us right now. It challenged us to resist becoming resentful of all the changes and sacrifices we've been asked to make. It challenged us to find new ways to stay connected with loved ones and friends while remaining healthy. And it challenged us to become more creative in setting ourselves apart from the crowd to attract and connect with potential clients and business. Now, Napoleon Hill, who wrote Think and Grow Rich in 1937, said each adversity, every failure, every heartache 
carries with it the seed of an equal or greater benefit. However, it's up to us to look for, find, and nurture that seed if we're going to reap the benefits. And that takes a certain mindset. So what I'm going to share with you today will help you find, nurture, and grow that seed of equal or greater benefit. So you can use the challenges of 2020 to grow even stronger and propel you into even greater success in 2021. See, we live in a universe that speaks to us through two growth signals, longing and discontent. The longing for something we haven't yet created and the feeling of discontent with our current circumstances. And these two energies, the pain of your problem and the burning desire for what you want are what spark us to grow. And they're essential for creating new results. So it's vital that we pay attention to them. So what are you longing to create? Is it more vibrant health, deeper, more loving relationships, more passion and purpose in your work, more time and money to enjoy your life? And what is your discontent? My discontent was struggling with feelings of low self-esteem and unworthiness, feeling held back by self-sabotage and limiting beliefs. Now, my life was going pretty well. I have an Ivy League education, successful careers as a landscape architect, a teacher, and an executive assistant, 17-year marriage, and a beautiful son. From the outside, it looked great. But inside, a part of me was dying. All my life, I was on a quest to find the ultimate owner's guide to life that would enable me to break through the invisible barriers holding me back. I knew those barriers were within me, not outside, but I felt powerless to discover and dissolve them. I studied countless personal development gurus, I attended seminars galore, and I did make some progress. But Reverend Dr. Michael Beckwith said, we are often pushed by pain until we are pulled by a vision. Well, the pain that pushed me to my breakthrough came as the result of a near breakdown after losing six loved ones, including my beloved mother, my ex-husband, who is still a good friend, and my dearest closest cousin in just 15 months. One died every three months. That dark night nearly destroyed me. It literally brought me to my knees. And life was just, it was just simply too painful. And I was about ready to cash in my chips, but I couldn't because my son had just lost his father three months before. Well, Spirit guided me to a workshop led by Mary Morrissey. And I recognized that through her lifetime of studying these principles, she had discovered that owner's manual that I had been seeking. And in that workshop, a longing I had been pushing aside for over 10 years was reborn the dream of being a life coach and helping others discover, create, and live the life they truly love. And when I finally let that vision pull me, I felt myself literally coming back to life. But I also felt very scared. And my paradigms were screaming at me, all the reasons why I couldn't do this. Who was I to have a, a dream like that? Why I shouldn't do this? I had a perfectly good job. It was also saying, you don't know how to do that. This isn't a good time. It's, it's not convenient. You know, it's not going to be easy. But I screwed up my courage and I went for it anyway. Because the pain of all those crushing losses had taught me three powerful and important lessons. The first lesson was that none of us know how much time we have left. Do we have years, weeks, or maybe just a few hours? The second lesson was that life is far too precious to waste even a day doing something you don't love. Yeah, I had a good job, but I had been hearing that voice inside me for a long time telling me, you're meant for so much more. You're meant for more. And then the third lesson was that regrets are far more painful to live with than failure. They haunt you. 
And I knew I didn't want to die with regrets for the things I didn't do because I was afraid. So through rigorous study and training, I became certified as a life mastery consultant. And by applying these powerful principles in my own life, I'm now living my dream. I'm loving my life. And I get to help other people do the same. Now, there are 10 success principles in the Dream Builder program that can skyrocket your success when you apply them. I'm going to share three of those principles with you today so you can navigate this and every future storm far easier and achieve your goals and dreams far faster. I need a sip of water. Hang on a second. See, life operates by invisible spiritual laws in much the same way that invisible physical laws govern how things like electricity and gravity work. And as we increase our understanding and application of these laws, we gain greater freedom and access to the abundance that's ours, and life gets way easier and more fun. So what I want to do today is raise your level of awareness of how things really work that language of success I spoke of earlier that creates our results. Sound good? Okay, now there are four major domains in life in which we experience our results. There's health and well-being, re uh, relationships, vocation, and time and money freedom. And every one of us has results in each of these areas. And the results you're getting are a perfect reflection of your level of awareness in that area. So let's expand your awareness by studying the pattern that creates your results. I call this the results formula. The way the results formula works is this, our thoughts cause our feelings. If you're thinking fearful thoughts, your heart starts to race, your palms sweat, you feel contracted and stressed. But if you're thinking positive, hopeful thoughts, you feel calm, centered, light, and optimistic. And your feelings cause your actions. When you're feeling scared or depressed, you take very different actions than you do when you're feeling rested and happy and optimistic. And your actions or lack of actions cause your results. So your thoughts cause your feelings, your feelings cause your actions, and your actions cause your results. Now, some people resist this concept. They don't like that their life is a result of their own thinking, yet it is absolutely true. And it's also very empowering because if you don't like the results that you're getting, you have the power to create different results by changing your thinking. You are not a victim of your circumstances, nor will the conditions change first. Your thinking must change first. And this brings us to the first C of activating your uh, superpower and dream building, and that is clarity. There's a saying, no wind is favorable to the sailor with no destination in mind. She has no way of knowing how to set the sails or turn the rudder to take advantage of the opportunities that are hers in the form of winds. But if she knows exactly where she wants to go, she can use even a challenging headwind to get her there. So where do you want to go? What do you want to achieve or create? What would you truly love for your life? Write this down. Clarity is power. Without a clearly defined blueprint, you can't build your dream house. And without a clear energetic blueprint of what you'd love, you can't build your dream life. So what would you love? What would you love? I find it so sad that so many of us had dreaming drummed out of us when we were little. We were told we couldn't have what we asked for so often that we just quit asking. Or we were told outright to quit daydreaming and get real when we started school. Well, I'm here to tell you, it's time to give yourself permission to dream again and dream big. 
Don't limit yourself to what you think you can have or create or what other people think you should want or what the economy says you can have. Just what would you love? And it's so important to suspend your need to know the how. The how is not your job. The what is your job. If you know every step you need to take to create this dream, it may be a worthy goal, but it's not big enough to be your dream. So your job is to get crystal clear on what you would love your life to look and feel like. Because as I said, clarity is power. You want to imagine this life in as much vivid detail and clarity as possible. Because when you become clear on what it is you really want in life, you'll begin to see opportunities and circumstances and resources that you would otherwise have missed. And when you're clear on your destination, it saves you so much energy. Decisions are far easier and you get there far faster as illustrated by this family circus cartoon. The little boy says, let's go for a walk, granddad. They go for a walk and granddad knows exactly where he's going and he goes there directly. Little boy, he is literally all over the place and he's exhausted, right? I'm tired, granddad, carry me. So clarity truly is power. And it's key to finding the balance we all crave. If we had more time, as in my workshops, I would guide you through an exercise that would help you gain greater clarity on what you would love your life to look and feel like using that one and only question I mentioned before, what would I love? So I invite you to spend some time on your own asking that question and imagining and describing the life of your dreams in all four quadrants, health, relationships, vocation, time and money freedom in vivid detail and dream big. You want it to be something you can fall in love with. And that brings us to the second C of dream building, which is commitment. Once you commit to your dream, even in the absence of perfect conditions or knowing how, a whole manner of things begins to occur and rush to your aid for the fulfillment of that decision. And it's far easier to commit to your vision when you're in love with it. And that's easier when you can see it with clarity. I wanna share a story about the power of decision. This is the story of Scottish mountaineer, William H. Murray. Now, in the early 1900s, when Edmund Hillary was putting together a team to summit Mount Everest for the first time, he sought out renowned mountain climber, William Murray. He said, come with us. We want you on the team. But at this time, there were no sponsors for climbers. Each climber had to pay all of their expenses, and it was expensive. Murray really wanted to go. But when he asked and was told how much it would cost, he saw no way that he could come up with that. And so he declined and they went without him. Well, Hillary's team had a great expedition, uh, but they didn't summit. So a couple of years later, Hillary comes, he's putting together another expedition. And again, he sought out William Murray. We all want you on the team. Come with us this time, he said. But Murray did exactly the same thing. He asked how much and when, he asked how much it would cost. And when he was confronted with the price, he felt he still couldn't do it. Again, the price was more than he believed possible for himself. So he declined based on his conditions. Well, Hillary's team went further up the mountain this time and they learned a great deal, but they still didn't summit. So a couple of years later, Hillary comes back to Murray for a third time. He says, we're going one more time. And I really think we're gonna summit this time because the last time we got off the mountain, I turned around and I looked at her and I said, I will summit you because you're not getting any bigger and I am. And Murray wrote in his book, Evidence of Things Not Seen, that it took all the courage and strength he could muster 
to force himself to ask a different question. Instead of asking, what's the full price? He asked, what's the deposit? And when told the amount, he wrote, I knew I could get that amount together, but I had no idea how I would come up with the rest. And he also knew the down payment was non-refundable and it would not get him all the way to Everest. But he put the money down and he committed himself. And the rest is history. That was the expedition that first summited Mount Everest. Murray later wrote this famous verse about commitment. He said, until one is committed, there is hesitancy, the chance to draw back, and always ineffectiveness. Concerning all acts of initiative and creation, there is one elementary truth, the ignorance of which kills countless ideas and splendid plans, that the moment one definitely commits oneself, then providence moves too. All sorts of things occur to help one that would never otherwise have occurred. A whole stream of events issue from the decision, raising in one's favor all manner of unforeseen incidents and meetings and material assistance, which no man could have dreamt would have come his way. I need a sip of water again, hang on. <clears throat> So bring to mind your Mount Everest and know that if you want to reach that vision, you must commit to it. You must energize it with your attention. You must develop a burning desire for it, okay? I want you to imagine two sailors this time. Both sailors want to go to San Francisco. One has been told, ah, oh, you should see San Francisco, beautiful city, fun things to do, beautiful things to see, nice people, good weather, you'd have a blast. The other one wants to go to San Francisco because his sweetheart, his soulmate is waiting for him there. And he is determined to marry her. Now, you know, there will be storms and challenges that rise up between both these sailors and San Francisco. Which one do you think will make it to San Francisco. Chat that into the, into the chat if you think you know. Exactly, the sailor with the girl waiting for him, of course. Yeah, the other one, as soon as he sees a big storm on the horizon, he's very likely to say, you know, I've heard good things about Los Angeles too. I think I'll go there instead. But the one with his sweetheart waiting for him, as the, as the song says, ain't no mountain high enough, ain't no river, no ocean wide enough to keep him from her. And that's the kind of burning desire you must have for your dream. So what about you and your dream? Well, it starts by making a decision. It starts by saying, today's the day I'm going after my dream. Today's the day I say no to the doubts and the reasons it won't work. And I say yes to the possibilities and the opportunities. Today's the day I suspend my belief in the power of my conditions. Instead, I believe more in the power that's breathing me. Today's the day I decide for my dream, even without knowing the how. So let me ask you, is today the day you're ready to commit to your dream? because that's what it takes if you wanna turn your dream into your reality. And this brings us to the third seat of dream building, which is courage, learning to befriend your fear. So when we decide for a dream, there's a part of us that feels like this, this little guy, yes, I'm doing this thing. And then there's another part of us that may be feeling more like this, How's that going to happen? Well, how are you going to do that? You've never done that before. Who are you to have that dream? You don't have what it takes. Our fears are very, very clever. They'll never say, I'm here to kill your dream. I'm here to be sure you never get what you really want. No, they disguise themselves as protective or reasonable. 
I'm here to be sure you never get hurt that way ever again. But if all of those rational reasons don't work, they may use the biggie on you. <gasps> what if you fail? What if you fail? Raise your hand if you've ever had a failure in life. Anybody? Anybody but me? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we all have. For one thing, when we were babies, we all started out as non-walkers, right? But we kept going. We kept rising up and falling down and getting back up and falling down until finally we became walkers. But something happens when we become adults. We stop giving ourselves permission to fall down. We have a relationship that fails. We think, well, I guess I'm just not meant to have love in my life. Or we have a business failure. I'm just not cut out to be a business person, I guess. See, you have to give yourself permission to fail enough to succeed. You must befriend your fear and take the actions to serve your dream even when fear rises up and tries to stop you, as it did when I committed to my dream. Because fear and failures, failure are prerequisites for achieving great dreams. And successful people know this. They're willing to be uncomfortable for the sake of growth and their dreams. Great dream builders are willing to fail and rise again. So when the voice of doubt questions you and asks, what if you fail? Let your response be, bring it on. You know, if I fail, I will rise up, keep going, and I will succeed. So you might be wondering, well, how do I give power to the part of me that wants to move forward when I'm hearing this voice shouting at me that wants to keep me playing small? Well, there's a whole process I take my clients through in the dream building program. But today, I'm going to share three steps that you can take, okay? The first step is to notice what you're noticing. You need to increase your awareness of your thoughts. Research has shown that 95% of our thoughts are subconscious, 95%. And it's only when you're aware of something, those thoughts, those, those fearful thoughts, that you can reprogram them. So notice what you're noticing. Then when you notice those thoughts, hit the pause button. Interrupt those thoughts. Quit telling that story. Quit feeding those fears. And then use your breath to shift your energy. So anytime you notice you've been triggered, and these days, oh my gosh, that can happen multiple times a day with all the chaos swirling around us. So you want to use this breathing technique I'm going to show you to calm your nervous system, to shift it from the fight fight, flight, freeze mode to the rest, relax, create energy of the parasympathetic nervous system, which is the one that's responsible for keeping us healthy and thinking more clearly. Now, this deceptively simple but powerful process works like this. So you want to take a deep but comfortable breath in through your nose. When we breathe through our nose, it signals our nervous system that you're safe because you can't run from danger and breathe through your nose. So you take a deep but comfortable breath in and you hold that breath at the top for a couple of counts and bring to mind something you're grateful for because gratitude is on a frequency that's harmonic with abundance. And then release that breath as if blowing out through a straw. Letting go of all of the contractive thoughts, any regrets about the past, any worries about the future, and just bring your mind right to the current moment because that is really the only time that exists. So do this, take three or more breaths like that until you feel calm and centered. And you may have to do this many times a day, anytime you notice that you're feeling triggered, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. I highly recommend practicing this technique when you're not stressed because you want it to become your default whenever you are triggered so that you automatically, it's like learning a new language. You wanna become fluent in this. And then the third step 
is to reconnect to your dream. You want to bring your dream to mind and returning from the energy of that dream, install a new thought that's in harmony with the energy of your vision and then take action. Anchor that new paradigm with action. Ask yourself, okay, what can I do with what I have from where I'm at that would move me in the direction of my dream? Even if it's a baby step and then calendarize it. There's a lot of power in our calendars if we use it. So put it on your calendar and then do it. So ask yourself, what actions can I take from where I am and with the resources I have that'll move me in the direction of my dream? Whether that's to stay safe and healthy, improve a relationship, attract more clients so you can, so you can thrive rather than just survive during these challenging times. And know this, progress is far more important than perfection. My mentor, Mary Morrissey, likes to say, even baby steps can take you all the way to the top of Mount Everest if you keep taking them. And the choices and actions you take today will determine who you become tomorrow. So as promised, I have a gift for you and then we'll close with a powerful thought. But first I wanna recap quickly what we've covered today, okay? First, you discovered that there is a pattern to success, all right? Then we talked about your thoughts are your superpower. And we talked about the three C's to activating that superpower and building your dream. The first C is clarity. You must have a clue, a clear blueprint of what you would love. And the clearer the blueprint, the more power you have. The second C is commitment. You must decide for your dream in the absence of knowing how, just like William Murray did when he went for his dream. And then the third C is courage, learning to befriend your fear, kicking fear out of the driver's seat of your life. Because you know now that fear and failure are prerequisites for greatness. And we talked about the three tools to befriending your fear. Notice what you're noticing, hit the pause button and use your breathing, and then reconnect with your dream and taking action. Now, the main idea I want you to take away from today, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> hang on a second, is that your thoughts are incredibly powerful. And when you learn to harness them, you can be, do, have, create whatever you are willing to get in harmony with. Now, there are, those are three of the 10 steps in the Dream Builder program. So raise your hand if you connect with any of these ideas, and you know that if you really implemented these, they'd make a difference in your life. Anybody? Great. Well, as promised, I have a special gift for those of you who are ready to take action on your dream. Between my speaking and coaching schedule, I carve out time for a limited number of discovery sessions. These are powerful 60-minute phone conversations where I help you get clear on where you are and the hidden things that have been holding you back, what you would love to create, and then the next most important steps you can take that'll move you in the direction of your dream. Most people leave these sessions feeling energized, inspired, and motivated to go for their dream. And the value of these one-on-one -on -one sessions is $250. But if you're ready now to go for your dream, <clears throat> excuse me, a no frog in my throat, or you want help clarifying your dream, your next best step is to schedule a discovery session with me at no charge. This is my gift to you. But I have a limited number of slots available. So you want to go to my calendar at speakwithsandra.com to schedule that session today. I've helped dozens of clients rescue fractured relationships, reverse serious health challenges, and rekindle their passion for life so they can live a life they truly love. If you'd like help giving birth to the dream in your heart, 
So you can express and experience all the love, success, freedom, health, passion for life, and inner peace you desire. Contact me at speakwithsandra.com to schedule that session. If you'd like to discover and dissolve the mental barriers that are keeping you stuck, so you can step into your power and see just how high you can soar, that's your next move to schedule that call with me today. So contact me today at speakwithsandra.com for that free discovery session. And I'll put that into the, uh, the chat um, when I'm done. Now, like William Murray, you have a beautiful dream, but perhaps it seems impossible. Perhaps you see no clear path at this point. Well, after summiting Mount Everest, Murray wrote, absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. So just because you don't know how right now, you don't see a path right now, that doesn't mean that a path to your dream doesn't exist. It just means you're not aware enough yet to see the path. You have a splendid dream, but to achieve your dream, you must spend time writing it down in vivid detail. You must decide for it, and not just once, but over and over. You must decide for it over opposing circumstances. You must decide for it when it's inconvenient, when it's uncomfortable, when you don't feel like it. But know this, that when you really commit yourself, then providence moves too. So as you return to your life, know that what is inside you is far greater than any challenge you're facing. You have incredible power within you. This is your moment. Today's your day to take bold action and make the commitment to your vision. As the philosopher Goethe once said, whatever you can do or dream you can, begin it. Boldness has genius, power, and magic in it. So be bold today. It has been a pleasure and a privilege sharing this time and my message with you today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sandra. So we do have a question. Um, are we going to be able to receive the slides from your presentation today? Oh, I could probably do that. Can you yeah. send them to me and then I will forward them on to our network presidents to distribute out to everybody or I have a list and I can just. Yeah, I also, um, it looks like you're recording this. I am. So um, would it um, be equally effective if they got the, the presentation along with the slides? Sure. So let me let me know how that works. Um, but I can I can share the with you, um, okay. and I'm going to put the uh, uh, thing in the chat for anyone who is interested in contacting me for the discovery session. I'm trying to type and, and talk at the same time. <laughs> So are there, uh, does anyone have any other questions? I think it was amazing. Thank you. Dream big. I wrote That's that right. in big letters. Dream yeah. big. Yeah, because if you, if you limit your dream to what you think you can accomplish, it's so much harder to fall in love with it. And if you're not in love with it, you're not gonna to commit to it. And if you don't commit to it, the first challenge that comes along is gonna derail you. So you've gotta, it's gotta be something that you are in love with. So that when those, when those challenges rise up, just like with the sailor, okay, I, maybe I have to detour, go this way, but I'm going there. I'm getting to San Francisco. You can't stop me. If you have that kind of commitment and burning desire for your dream, you will accomplish it. As Winston Churchill said, never, 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 never give up. Yep, that's great. That's amazing. 
Do we have any more questions, ladies and gentlemen? This has been amazing. Thank you for being a positive influence to kick off our 2021. You're so welcome. It's my pleasure. And something as simple as breathing your nose and out a straw. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's deceptively simple. You might think, oh, you know, it's just breathing, but it's amazing how it shifts your nervous system. Mm -hmm. And we don't make very good decisions when we're in the panic mode, when yeah. it's fight or flight or freeze, mm -hmm. you know, um, that's just the way we were, we evolved. And so you wanna, as, as soon as you notice that you feel contracted, like um, a few months back, you know, uh, I noticed, wow, that's interesting. I'm, I'm having a little bit of a difficulty taking a nice, comfortable, full breath, you know? And I realized I'm being triggered. I thought I was doing pretty good. I'm being triggered. And so I use this, this breathing technique. It's mm -hmm. gonna be okay. It's gonna be all right. I, agree. I mean, these, I agree. most yes. of the challenges we face are not mm -hmm. life threatening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yet, you know, our our sympathetic nervous system was set up to um, for survival to keep it, mm -hmm. you know, when the when the saber-toothed tiger is chasing me, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. um, that kicks in. Mm -hmm. But the problem is that these days we're being triggered into that um, nervous system all the time for things that are not life-threatening. They're just right. scary. And, and we don't know how to get out of that. You know, the, the gazelle on the, on the Serengeti, after it runs away from the tiger, if it survives, you know, two minutes later, it's calmly grazing again. We don't do that. We don't shut it off. And so we're in, in constant stress mode. Mm -hmm. And that reduces your immune system, you know, it, mm -hmm. um, so that's why that, that breathing technique is so powerful. Thank you so much for that. Any more, any more questions? Uh, yeah, I have my hand raised on the zoom. I don't know how to operate oh, this sorry. stuff most of the time. No, you're good. I'm just like, learning as well. This is all new for me too. Um, uh, Sandra, thank you so much. I did schedule my time with you already. So it's on your calendar. So thank you. But I was going to say one of the things, uh, and I'm glad you talked about the breathing techniques, because that's one of the mindfulness exercises I do with the Calm app. That Calm app has been really good. And mm -hmm. I also have a journal that I keep that, that when you have those thoughts, where they come from and how you bring it back to what you said. So thank you for that confirmation. I really needed that today because I've been practicing the mindfulness techniques and the first one they talk about is the breathing technique that you right. shared with us today. So thank you. I needed confirmation that I was headed in the right direction. So thank oh, you for you're today. you're so welcome, Angela. Yeah, you're thank so you. I look forward to talking with you. Yes, I scheduled it already. Thank you, Sandra. <laughs> so um, do we have any other, I don't have anything else on the schedule. Uh, okay. Dar, do we have anything else? No, I had initially... Um, scheduled it so that we had plenty of time afterward to um, stay and chat if that was what we desired till 1130. But um, we were trying to be respectful and mindful of people's time and schedules. And I know that we're all zoomed out, but um, Sandra had <laughs> such a wonderful gift presentation for us. So um, if we have nothing else, um, then we can wrap it up and I will stop the recording. Thanks, ladies. Thank